I'm James, I've been with Bailey Gifford for the past 18 years and uh, past 10 of those years part of the team here that manages Scottish American or Saints as, as most folks call it. Um, I'd like to start today however by talking not about Saints but about uh, retirement more generally because I think that if you're going to choose funds uh, to get you to and through a, a financially successful retirement um, you've got to start by thinking about your retirement goals um, and your challenges before you can start picking funds or thinking where you might invest. Um, and and my, invest, my, my advice to, to people thinking about uh, that in retirement is when you're thinking about retirement, think about Lena Lamont. And I've actually got a photo of, of Lena here, and I'm asking if I can click through this morning i hope you can see this so so here's lena in the, the red dress here and lena was one of the characters um, in singing in the rain uh, recently voted one of the top 10 greatest movies of all time in the latest sight and sound poll um, anyway lena lamont if you recall uh, has had a successful career as a, a silent movie star um, but now comes her second act and uh, she's determined to become a big success in musicals. But as the directors of the movie studio, as they're thinking about who are they gonna to pick to, to star in their new musical, they realized that unfortunately there are, there are three problems with, with, with picking Lisa. Um, number one, she can't act. Number two, she can't sing. And um, number three, she can't dance. Or, or as one of the, the characters says, you know, she can't, she can't sing, she can't dance. She's the triple threat. Now, when you're thinking about um, retirement and, and picking funds to invest in, I would advise it's quite helpful to remember Lena Lamont because in retirement, again, you've got three big obstacles to overcome, the, the, the triple threat in retirement. Now, this triple threat is a bit less glamorous than singing and dancing and so forth. Um, but it's a, it's a triple threat all the same, uh, and, and here it is. So number one is inflation. Um, let's say that you retire at age 60, you're still young. Um, chances are you are got another 30 years ahead of you, most likely statistics would say, maybe even longer. Uh, so you need to think hard about whether your retirement income can keep up with inflation over time. So um, rough rule of thumb here, looking at the past 30 years experience in the UK, is that over a 30 year time horizon, a full, full retirement, um, prices will be about three times in 30 years what they, what they are today. So a loaf of bread in 1990, about 30 years ago, cost you just under 50p. Today, that same loaf of bread will cost you £1.50. So you, you need to think about that if you're retiring, is your income going to keep, be enough to, to keep up over the next 30 years? So that you know, if you live till 90, that as prices triple, your income is going to triple as well to, to keep up with that. Inflation, a big one to think about. Number two of the threats in, in retirement, uh, resilience. Again, you've got a long journey ahead in retirement. And if the past tells us one thing, it's that that's going to be a bumpy road at various times. Um, look at what happened uh, in the UK in 2020. Uh, if you were investing in shares for dividend income, then you'll probably remember that UK dividends in 2020 went down by over 40%. Um, or the global financial crisis, when if you had a portfolio of banks like a Lloyd's or an HBOS, um, your income just stopped. So it's going to be a rocky journey. Um, at various times in retirement financially. And so the resilience of your income is really important to think about achieving so that you're not left in the lurch um, with your income collapsing. And then the third of the, the, the triple threats in retirement is, um, is running out. You know, it's a, it's, a, it's a marathon, not a sprint. There are going to be unexpected expenditures. And your pot of assets is going to be diminished every time you draw down capital to, to spend. So how are you going to make sure that you don't run out? 
this is this is the triple threat uh, as I would describe it. So with that backdrop, I think what what you're looking for if you're investing in, in a fund or, or some kind of strategy for retirement income, I would argue that what you need is a triple solution. So you need to invest, I would argue, in a fund that ideally will, number one, give you some inflation protection. So the assets will not just generate an income today, but an income that's got a really good chance of growing every year or over a period of time, at least in line with inflation. So that if you're getting one pound fifty of income today to buy that loaf of bread, it will be paying you four pounds of fifty, four pound fifty in thirty years. So you can still afford the loaf of bread because that's what the prices are ballpark probably going to go up to. Um, second, the fund should give you resilience of income. So even through years like two thousand and eight or two thousand and twenty, resilience of income from that fund is going to be important. <clears throat> and then thirdly, the fund should help you avoid running out. Um, and, and your best bet there, I would argue, and we'll come back to this, is, is a fund that can deliver real growth. And the reason that that's helpful, that a fund that can grow its capital value over time, is because if you invest in assets that, that grow like that, you can think of it like your pot naturally replenishing, it, replenishing itself, <clears throat> depending on how much you're drawing down, of course, but th there's an offsetting mechanism, which is if you've got capital growth still going on over time, um, that's helping you avoid running out, even as you're spending that pot. So that that triple solution is what Saints is designed to do, um, and, and that's why um, I think it's interesting to consider, at least in a in a retirement context, because it's going it, to our, our goal is that it gives you that triple solution. So so here is here is Saints track record, and <coughs> excuse me, what you can see here are the the annual dividends that Saints has paid out to its shareholders since 1937. And we, we start in 1937 because that way you can see the last time that Saints um, actually um, cut its dividend, which was in 1938. And since then, every year Saints has either held or grown its dividend, um, despite you can see a array of exciting times along the top, whether that's the Cuban Missile Crisis, various recessions, dot-com bubbles, etc., etc. Um, includes 2008, includes 2020, um, when Saints dividend grew by 1% compared to the prior year. So it's been a really, really resilient source of income over a very long period of time. And as we'll see um, on another chart um, later on, um, it's also grown significantly ahead of inflation. Um, and then uh, lastly, um, Saints dividend has been um, uh, not only growing, but because uh, the, the underpinnings of that growth has been the profits from the companies it's investing, invested in, it's also delivered really good capital growth. So that's helped with that running out portion. So not only have you got this, this growing and, and resilient income stream, but capital growth to help with that, that running out um, part as well. Um, that, I should say, is, is we'll come back to this, that's, that's essentially because Saints has really quite a different focus from a lot of income funds. Um, the focus of Saints is on finding companies that can, um, or investing in growth companies which pay dividends and not just in dividend yield. And, and that approach um, is what has delivered the capital growth to, to avoid running out. But we'll, we'll, we'll come back to this in a bit. Now, um, at this point, you might well be thinking, well, uh, it's all very well and good, but of course, this is all backward looking, of course, and, and how can I believe this will carry on in the future? So let me um, explain Saints in a bit more detail, and hopefully I can um, reassure you that this, uh, this triple solution is not just a fluke. So first of all, the, these solutions or these outcomes that I've talked about are baked into Saints' purpose. They're, they're what we do, and we think that's that's really important for, for keeping us focused on on, on delivering them. So, as, as managers of Saints, um, our our goal as the investment managers is to deliver to shareholders a high and dependable income stream. So that word dependable um, means we look for resilience in the income of everything that we invest in. And then alongside that, um, our purpose in managing Saints is to deliver real growth in income and capital, i.e growth ahead of UK inflation. So, so 
we feel that our, our objectives as managers are aligned with your objectives as in, in, in retirement. Uh, the, the trust was founded in 1873 explicitly to focus on income. So again, this is what we do. It's not just a, a label on the tin. It's it's part and parcel of Saints Hall being a reason for existing. You can see here the the, the founder back in the day, William Mingus. And then in, in the bottom right chart um, here, you can see a, a little graphic showing how Saints invests. Um, and as a rule of thumb, Saints aims to invest a 100% of its NAV in equities. Won't always be exactly 100%. I think currently you can see on the chart it's just under 97% or something like that, but around about 100% mark. Why, why do we do that? Why do we invest 100% of the NAV in equities? Well, it comes back to that triple threat. Our view is that no other asset class does as good a job as equities in keeping up with and, and ideally beating inflation over time. Because when you own an equity, you're owning a part of a company which is a real asset, which means that it has a chance of growing its profits and its dividends ahead of inflation or at least matching inflation. Unlike, um, for example, a lot of bonds which are you know, nominal assets. So, um, it, it investing in equities helps with that inflation objective and, and equities are also fantastic for helping you avoid running out in retirement because if you, particularly if you invest in growth equities, as Saints does, and the capital in your pot, as I, as I said earlier, is, is kind of being replenished over time by that growth. And, and when we get to the slide that in a couple, couple of minutes time showing Saints complete equity portfolio, what you're going to see is a, a portfolio of, of companies that I would tell you are growing companies, genuine growth companies growing their earnings and dividends at or above inflation for a long period of time. So that equity portfolio in some ways is really the secret of Saints track record that, that, that I showed in, in the last slide. Okay, so um, Saints is predominantly an, an, an equity in, uh, a vehicle for investing in equities because of those objectives. But what equities, what companies do we actually invest in? Well, globally, there are about 5,000 dividend paying companies that, that one can invest in around the world. And as, as managers of Saints, what we are looking for is quite simple. We're basically looking for companies which we believe will grow their dividends ahead of inflation, uh, where the dividend is going to be resilient through thick and thin, and where the, the bedrock of that dividend growth is profit growth, which in turn should drive capital growth. Now, um, I should say this is, this is not how a lot of income funds work. Uh, a lot of income funds start essentially with dividend yield. So they, they just buy stocks which yield four or five percent, like an HBOS or a Lloyd's or, or, or a VP or what have you. Um, in my view, that's a terrible place to start because high yielders very often are, are struggling, shrinking businesses. They're not growing, so they're, they're struggling with that growth element. Um, and their dividends are often not resilient at all. So our focus is very much as managers trying to find the, the best companies globally that can help with those three retirement objectives. Um, and here is, here is a good example of that. So um, this chart is showing you comparing the income that's been generated by Microsoft. The, this is shown in the blue bars. This is a company that Saints invested in in 2010. Um, and it's comparing the outcome of that to a sort of typical income fund stock, uh, RWE, the, the, the German utility. And what you can see on this slide is that the, the blue bars, the, the, the Microsoft dividend over the past 10 or 11 years, um, they started off uh, for every $100 you invested, you've got a, a yield of about 2.3% two, two in the early days. But because, and this was our analysis at the time, because Microsoft is a, is a very resilient dividend payer, fantastically strong balance sheet, very cash generative, modest payout ratio and so forth, because it has been a, a growth company, it's had lots of opportunities to invest and grow its business and generate higher levels of profit. Um, and and uh, because that resilience combined with the growth um, lends over time to a beating inflation, you can see the, the, the dividend that you've received from, from this uh, particular investment that Saints has received 
has gone up dramatically over the past 10 or 11 years from that original sort of two and a bit dollars to well, well over seven dollars um, on the initial investment from, from 10 years ago. Um, if you compare that to the sort of dividend yield approach, which would invest in something more like a, a, an RWE, very high yield to start with, but a shrinking business, a troubled business, something that cut its dividend. And if you compare the uh, example of, there's a little table below this showing the total income you've received over that, that whole period of time, you receive more, almost twice, more than twice the income from Microsoft and from RWE, and the capital growth to help with that replenishment and not running out has been far, far better. So this is really the secret to, to you know, in the equity portfolio, that point about the, the secret of the, the, the triple solution is us as managers identifying companies like Microsoft, doing bottom-up analysis of everything that we're investing in and asking those questions about inflation, about resilience, and about long-term growth. And, and what that bottom-up stock picking bottom produces stock is, um, is a portfolio, essentially, of these types of companies. Um, so you can see, uh, Microsoft in the left hand column here. The way this slide works is you've got all of the equities that Saints invest in arranged left to right from low to high dividend yield. Um, and you can see there's about 60 of them. Uh, the, the, the color codes on the right denote different types of growth, but essentially these are all, in our view, great growth companies for the long term, paying out a, a dividend. And this portfolio in combination is going to give that sort of triple solution for retirement in, in our expectation um, because of the nature of the things that we're investing in. So um, let me briefly pick out a, a couple of examples here uh, that we've invested in during 2022 for the first time, just to give you a flavor of what we're, we're buying. So in the, in the left hand column, you'll see a company called Intuit, which we have bought in the past 12 months. Um, this is a software company based in the US. It serves small and medium businesses with accounting software, uh, tax software, and so forth. And our analysis is that look out the next 10 years. This is a great company for delivering a good income, a resilient income, that, you know, low, great balance sheet, low payout ratio, very cash generative, um, very likely to keep growing year after year, whatever the world economy is doing. Um, because the bedrock of that income growth should be earnings growth, it should also drive capital growth over time. And, and in short, it's, it's fitting in with that same sort of set of goals that Microsoft has delivered well, very well for us over time, um, fitting with that triple solution idea. A second example, this is in the column second from left, uh, is L'Oreal, the beauty products company. Again, our evaluation is fits perfectly with these goals that we're aiming for inflation beating income growth, a very resilient income stream, growth in capital value over time. Our judgment is lots of opportunities still for L'Oreal to grow its business. It's a very well managed company. It's a very cash generative company. Um, family involvement keeps it on the straight and narrow. So um, again, another example, like all these companies that we believe will, will continue that track record that, that, that Saints has over the past many years. Now, um, Hopefully that gives you a flavor of how Saints might be helpful um, through, through, through retirement. Uh, before I end, let me, let me touch briefly on a, on a question that I've certainly been asked a lot recently, um, and that's about the impact of rising interest rates. You know, what, what happens to these companies as, as rates are going up? And in particular, are, are they going to be able to keep growing their dividends when the cost of their debt is going up? And my answer to that is, is yes. Um, I, I'm, I'm confident that, that that will be okay. And one reason I'm confident about that is because the average company in Saints, and, and you can see this on this next slide, if you look at the, the bars in the middle of the chart at the top, which shows you the debt to equity ratios of these companies. So the, the average company in, um, in Saints, on, on average, its debt to equity ratio, a measure of its indebtedness, is only 30%. And that's much lower than the typical company, which is more like 50%. So as interest rates rise, um, our expectations, managers, my expectation is that that won't pose much of a headwind for the companies that are in the Saints portfolio because they don't have very much debt in them, essentially. You, should, you can also see here, incidentally, on the, on the next bar down, the, the, the five-year 
dividend growth um, of, of, of the equity portfolio. Um, and I've put at the bottom, there's a little bar here as well. Another question we're increasingly being asked as managers is about the, um, the impact of the portfolio on things like climate. Um, and isn't that a risk to dividend growth if you're investing in companies that have that are large carbon emitters? Again, you can see I'm comfortable with that risk because the, the carbon footprint of this portfolio um, is again much lower than the, the average company. The nature of what we invest in, the kind of capital like software companies, is very different from what a lot of income funds invest in. So lots of challenges, no doubt, ahead with rising interest rates, with um, climate requirements, whatever it might be. But this portfolio in Saints is designed to last for a long period of time and keep delivering that um, resilient and inflation-proof income stream. I've already talked um, about the, the couple of recent purchases in Saints, so I won't go through those again. But very finally, let me just highlight one more thing about Saints that um, helps, particularly with that resilience point around income, and that's the revenue reserve. Like many um, investment trusts, Saints has a, a revenue reserve that is essentially income that was not paid out in prior years and sort of tucked away for a rainy day. Um, that you can see in the bar on the left here. And that revenue reserve is, again, really useful um, to give folks in retirement some comfort that their income will, will hold up in tough years. In 2020, our portfolio's income actually dipped by about 3% year on year. But because the, the board of the trust was able to draw on those reserves, they were actually able to increase the payout to shareholders by 1% um, by using the revenue reserve. So that's another key advantage of an investment trust that can, that can help in retirement. So, um, to, to summarize uh, the, the triple solution, um, there are challenges, no doubt, in thinking about investing for retirement, um, but, but Saints invest in real growth companies, paying dividends that we expect to grow ahead of inflation. Um, we hope it will be a very resilient source of income, as it has been in the past, to do with the type of companies we invest in, our, our analysis of every single asset that we invest in um, on behalf of shareholders. Um, the, like, like the Microsoft example, growing even in 2020. Um, and then by, by focusing on companies that can grow their earnings rather than just on out and out dividend yield, and that kind of idea of capital growth rather than dividends, uh, we hope that Saints will continue delivering really good capital growth to replenish your retirement pot and, and help you avoid running out. Um, so to, to, to put it in another way, you know, Retirement can be a tricky road, but even if it rains from time to time, if you pick the right fund and, and you're cognizant of those risks, um, you have probably got every chance that you can still be singing in the rain, even when those rain showers occasionally come along.